Hi, good evening. This is uh, Lisbeth Show Tapa One. And tonight I would like to honor our military men from the past, present, and future. Most especially those who have fallen before us or have fallen in service of their country because this is in the US um, but also I would like to honor the military men of our allies because they also serve in their country but tonight I would just want to honor our military men since uh, I've I've worked I have worked in the previous Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines for three years as a civilian medical officer that was in 1988 to 91 and so I have lots of friends and I have relatives who have served the military and I salute them because uh, there's a lot of things that they sacrifice to defend our country and so let me salute them I got this uh, want to salute our soldiers but of course today is to honor our fallen heroes I got this from uh, um, the Facebook picture uh, from this is from the cemetery the Clark Air, previous Clark Air Force Base but they maintain the cemetery over there and they died for all of us because um, it's not basically it's not only for the United States it's for for the world because the US stands for democracy and liberty and they have helped a lot of countries like the Philippines Korea the, even the British you know all our allies and I was there when they started uh, uh, Desert Storm and I have a lot of friends who went there and so let me show another one this one this is a picture I got from the internet to show that our soldier have lots of sacrifices let me see one more sacrifices to defend our country and basically also the world basically the US is a peacekeeper you know for some countries who are 
who would like to hurt the world. Let me see. There's one over here. So, so tonight, lest we forget their sacrifices, so we, we continue to protect democracy in our little way because they're doing the, uh, a great job of protecting this country and also the world. So there is, um, last year because of the uh, COVID-19, um, there was really no gathering in the capital but they did a uh, a concert where they did a medley of the United States Air Armed Forces let me show it I I placed the uh, reference of this video in my description let me <coughs> If you need help or want to give help, please reach out. It's been a tradition from the beginning of the National Memorial Day concert to honor all the men and women of our armed services. This year, since we could not be together at the Capitol, General Mark A. Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, wanted to continue this tradition, and they have prepared this special salute to all those who serve or have served. And now, here are the chiefs of the military services, Maestro Jack Everly, the National Symphony Orchestra, and military choruses for the Armed Forces Medley. The United States Coast Guard!
It is our honor to introduce the distinguished chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, General Mark A. Milley. This Memorial Day, we pause to honor the more than one million Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice since the founding of our nation. We remember their courage, we remember their selfless service, and we remember how they lived. As we mark the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, we're especially mindful of the more than 400,000 Americans who gave their last full measure of devotion to ensure that this republic, for which we stand, shall never perish from the earth. Since then, over 100,000 more brave Americans gave their lives across the hills of Korea, in the jungles of Vietnam, in the sands of the Middle East. Over a million and a half sustained physical wounds, and even more carry the invisible wounds of war. Today, we honor the extraordinary sacrifice of not only these service members, but also their families, especially our Gold Star families. Each individual loss brings untold grief. Each loss is a hope never realized. Each loss is a dream never reached. Every one was a son or a daughter, a husband or a wife, a mother or a father. Each is a gaping hole of grief that can never be adequately filled. For the families of the fallen, we are here to remember that for them, every day is Memorial Day. So today, we collectively renew our vow to always remember the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen that paid in blood for the freedoms that we all enjoy every day. On behalf of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and all of our service men and women, thank you. Thank each of you for remembering. Thank you, General Milley. to fight for the right hand 
to build the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. God of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. And it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way, and all the gate is out and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army to the um, Bible verses with regards to military uh, let me okay it says in uh, in Timothy let me see I cannot see anyway in 2 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life, so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. And I believe that each one of us has a uh, destiny, a mission to to accomplish not f for ourselves but for the Lord and um, it didn't happen as a uh, at random you know but it is um, inspired by by somebody up there the Holy Spirit now there is this uh, psalm which uh, King David has uh, uh, prayed and sung. He says on Psalm 144 verse 1 to 2, it says, uh, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle my loving kindness and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. And uh, the one that uh, I put there is uh, John 6, no, 15, verse uh, 13. Greater love has no one than this. Let me see this. Uh, that one lay down his life for his friends. And that is, their model is Jesus. Because uh, as soldiers, we will be our commander. And his father, God the Father, commanded him to, to come down, or to become human, and to die on the cross, to save us, actually the whole humanity. Because um, if, uh, in the past they have to offer some sacrificial lamb to 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 God and now it's Jesus became the sacrificial lamb so that the heavens will be open for us So he took up our sins. Now, it pleases me, you know, to uh, when I see soldiers praying, you know, and they should because 
um, as a soldier um, going into the military, they undergo a lot of training to increase their stamina to and uh, to become strong. They they are trained for for um, certain skills. Now let me with regards to so we understand what how what soldiers go through um, when they enlist. It's uh, I read this from Soldiers Health from uh, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. It says, when soldiers and other service members are deployed, they not only risk injury and death from combat, but also exposed to a range of other health threats that may have a negative impact on the mission performance and readiness. These threats come in many forms, the infectious disease to neurotrauma and psychological stress. These challenges negatively impact physical performance and degrade cognitive functioning and decision making. Historically, diseases are dis debilitated or killed more service members than battle injuries. More person days were lost among U.S. military personnel due to malaria than to battle injury during every military campaign fought in malaria endemic region during the 20th century. In Iraq and Afghanistan, 76% of deployed troops reported enteric illnesses with one in six confined to quarters for several days. Mental disorders are the leading cause of hospital beds in the military and the second leading cause of medical encounters. Neurological and psychiatric diagnoses are among the top five reasons for medical evacuation from Iraq and Afghanistan. Since 2000, more than 384,000 traumatic brain injuries have been reported in the DOD. The Army's active force is at, is at its smallest, its smallest twice since um, uh, before World War II. So it is critical for each service member to remain healthy. Force readiness is complicated further by the fact that deployment are often to austere environments where there are endemic infectious diseases to which our troops have no immunity. The WRA IR's legacy of scientific excellence, extensive international research network, and unique set of in-house research combined assets combine to ensure the continuing ability to meet these critical research needs. So as you see, Soldiers, especially those are deployed, undergoes a lot of stuff, a, a lot of danger. So with us, we should, on our part, we should keep on praying for them. And, uh, you know, I like it when, you know, that they themselves pray 
you know and i know the the military has chaplains who to help them and this morning i attended the uh, a uh, sunday service and uh, actually the pastor was uh, telling about his his uh, experience in uh, in Iraq when he was deployed and I'm glad that the military even when I was working in the at Clark Air Force Base they have chaplains there we have chapels and it's it's very important for for our soldiers you know that the the they they have this uh, belief and i know there there were some uh, soldiers who got baptized especially when they were in iraq you know because you never know who's going to return back you know and we just hope and we pray that they'll be safe and um, there will be no casualties but we are at war right now actually i believe we're not just at war physically but also spiritually so let let me have it <laughs> again for another installment of our virtual concert series, United We Stand, Music to Connect Us. Today we feature music from a band whose 2018 feature film stands alone as the highest grossing musical biographical film in history. Here is the U.S. Army Voices and the U.S. Army Band Downrange singing music from Queen. <laughs> 